This is a practice exercise on page 432 in the textbook dealing with determining which substances have hydrogen bonding possible. So before we look at this problem, let's make sure we understand what hydrogen bonding is. So in order for hydrogen bonding to exist, you have to have the hydrogen atom attached to fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen, because those are very electronegative elements. So when you have hydrogen attached to that, you have a very, very polar bond. So you actually have to have the hydrogen attached to those, and you also have to have a lone pair or a non-bonding pair of electrons available on a fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen atom. So if you're doing your bonding between molecules of the same substance, as long as you have the hydrogen attached to fluorine, hydrogen attached to oxygen, or hydrogen attached to nitrogen, you're going to have that lone pair or non-bonding electron pair available on the fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen of a separate molecule. So really all we're looking for is a hydrogen atom attached to fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. Sometimes you'll be able to determine this based on just which atoms are present in the structure. Other times you're really going to want to draw the structure to make sure you understand where the hydrogen atom is attached. So just for the sake of practice with drawing our Lewis structures, we'll go ahead and draw Lewis structures for all of these. The first one, the methylene chloride. If you look, it's only made of carbon, hydrogen, and chlorine. So it's not likely that it's going to have hydrogen bonding because we don't see the fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. But just to double check, we'll draw that Lewis structure. So carbon's going to be in the center. It's going to be attached to two hydrogens and two chlorines. And you can see that we've used 20 valence electrons in drawing that Lewis structure, and that makes sense based on the four valence electrons from the carbon, the two from each hydrogen, and then seven from each chlorine. So that is the correct Lewis structure for methylene chloride. And you can see that there are hydrogen atoms there, but they are not bonded to fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen. So this cannot exhibit significant hydrogen bonding. And we're going to see something similar with the phosphine. So there are my eight valence electrons for phosphine. And again, even though there are hydrogen atoms, they are not attached to fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. So no significant hydrogen bonding possible there. Last next one is going to be hydrogen peroxide. And they're telling us how this is bonded, H-O-O-H. -O -O -H. So hydrogen attached to oxygen, attached to oxygen, attached to hydrogen. So if we look, we know that we've got 14 valence electrons. So we can see that that is the correct structure for hydrogen peroxide. And now we do have these hydrogen oxygen bonds. So we do have the ability for hydrogen bonding because we've got the hydrogen attached to the very electronegative element. And then if we had multiple hydrogen peroxide molecules, we would have these non-bonding electron pairs on the oxygen also available to hydrogen bond with another molecule. So this one definitely has some hydrogen bonding possible. The last one we're going to draw is the acetone, because again we see that we've got the carbons, the hydrogens, and the oxygens, so we need to understand where those oxygens and hydrogens are bonded. So the structure of acetone, and they're trying to help you understand this by the way they're giving you the structure. There's a carbon attached to another carbon, which is double bonded to an oxygen attached to a carbon, and each carbon on the end is a CH3 group. It's attached to those three hydrogens. So if we look at the bonding in acetone, we can see that there are hydrogen atoms, but since they are bonded to the carbon atom, this does not exhibit hydrogen bonding. So because this hydrogen is not attached to a very electronegative element, the acetone will not exhibit hydrogen bonding interactions. So the best answer we have here is that the hydrogen peroxide does, and again that's because in this case the hydrogen is attached to that very electronegative oxygen. Now again, to be clear with hydrogen bonding, hydrogen bonding does not mean is hydrogen bonded to the el these elements. It means that if there were multiple molecules of this in solution, could hydrogen bonding interactions occur between those two molecules? And again, hydrogen bonding is kind of a bad name. It's not a true bond, it's not a covalent bond. It's just a very strong attractive force because we're gonna have a partial positive on the hydrogen partial negative on the oxygen, which would be attracted to partial positives and partial negatives in other molecules. And again, this is the only molecule that can exhibit this because this is the only molecule in which a very electronegative element, oxygen, is attached to that hydrogen.